Welcome back to our video tutorial series on developing with Pyrel. In this tutorial we'll have a look at how sharing between pilots is going to work. So first of all let's have a look at the pilot we've been working on in this tutorial series. We already made some changes here and we already brought in capabilities like extensions which we will see our way of sharing components. Now, what we can do here is we can inspect the pilot API. We did that already in an earlier tutorial and we found that there are actually two functions like get data and set data that work across a common data store. Now, in order to see how sharing between pilots really works, I would advise a more dynamic mode where we actually just run a local pilot feed service and um, use this for publishing pilots. And you see this was our shell and it currently gets the sample pilot from the official feed. Now we will change it in a second to go to another feed, to our local feed. And here it is. So it is running on 9000, the local host. Let's just change this. And we see there's currently no pilot published. All right, so how do we publish a pilot? Let's just publish our my pilot first. So if you can remember, it was the pilot publish command. And for the URL, we just pick this one, right? And for the API key, we should pick one of these. And the fresh command just builds it from scratch. Great. This is also the command that we will use in the second pilot. Okay. All right, let's see if that builds and publishes successfully. Um, looks good, looks good. We see sample pilot, remove, welcome to Pyrel. So that's the second one is at the moment really just an empty thing. But yeah, let's focus on this one first because it's rather empty at the moment. And let's publish a new version of this one. Let's say an update. And what we'll do is that um, we will only set data here. And we will, we will call this uh, test. And we will give it a value of 42. And that's about it. So we can publish it. Now our page wants to see the value and uh, it will then show this one. All right, so how do we get the value? Well, we get it from here. I think we called it test. Great. And now, there we go, 42, quite nice. Now, this way you can always share between the two, but how should we know that something changed? Right, for this you can of course fall back to standard mechanisms. Now, for instance, we have an event mode and uh, this event mode works in multiple ways. So let's just have a, a very quick look. And let's use it like this. Let's publish. Again, we could run it locally, but um, we want to see the integration of the two. So it already found new data with a value of 42, which is nice. 
because that means that we could have here something like a counter and then a set interval function the increment the counter on the data and it does this maybe every second now that's rather disturbing so we should maybe not um, have a alert on the other side so the easiest thing to do here is um, we don't want to have this but rather we want to use a react use effect all right uh, maybe let's rename this Um, that's about it. That's the whole code. Now we made this already dynamic in no time. So let's publish this too. <laughs> and once it's published, let's have a look. It starts. And importantly, it never crashed. It also didn't crash when we had nothing in there. So after one second it started and now we already share this data very effectively. Quite nice. So that's uh, one way of sharing data in Pyro. It's a very easy way. Of course, the same way you can share a function because you're not constrained to primitive values on the set data. You could of course use, let's say more Disturbing patterns, like you could set something on the window. But we don't want to go there. I mean, also TypeScript doesn't like it. You would either need to declare global or you would need to um, use a computer property on it. So I rather want to look into a more interesting facet, which is sharing components. And that's actually quite simple. Uh, as it turns out, we already share components because we already use an extension mechanism on this page. Right now we use it from the same micro frontend, from the same pilot. We use this foo component, but we are not constrained to offer the foo component on one thing. Actually, we could offer it from another component too. So we could go in here and say, let's just publish it let's look in here now we see we got actually two things appearing here so you cannot only have a single component but you can actually have multiple ones here and that's quite powerful because it allows you to grow naturally and even if there wouldn't be a foo component registered it always falls back to an empty rendering by default so again, the most important part here is that Pyro makes sure that the application then never crashes and is always in a, in a state that can just grow naturally, right? So now there is nothing in between, nothing given yet. In the next tutorial, we'll have a look how functionality and data can be provided from the Pyrel instance to the pilots.